Okay. Good, good, good. Ah, good to see each one of you this morning. So, our church theme for the year is about growing into Christ, you remember? And they were some words that uh, Paul wrote to the Ephesian church. And uh, we introduced that obviously in January. And then in later January, February, March, I spent a few Sundays looking at the Paul's most common description of our relationship with God, which is the phrase, in Christ. And to be honest, I spent more than a few weeks, didn't I really? Well, it was only quite a few weeks. Because there are over a hundred references where Paul talks about our relationship being in Christ. And uh, we've now had Easter. And my thoughts are going back to sort of, uh, you know, carrying on where we were. And uh, a thought I had was, did Jesus, how did Jesus describe our relationship with him? In what terms did he put it? And did he put it in any way that was similar to that, that way that Paul described it when Paul spoke about being in Christ. And I realized he did. In fact, he used, a, as he so often did, he used a picture. He used a physical reality to describe this incredible uh, spiritual truth. And it's that physical reality and therefore what it tells us about this spiritual truth that we're going to look at and explore um, for the next two weeks, but I think just the two weeks. So I invite you to turn with me if you've got a Bible, otherwise I'll be reading from John 15. John 15. Beginning at verse 1, we read as follows. This is Jesus speaking, isn't it, to his disciples in the upper room. And he says this to them, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are always clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you will and it will be given you. This is my fa- to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. Wow. Did you spot it? All the way through the, that, those verses, Jesus talks about remaining in me, he says, doesn't he? No wonder Paul then described our relationship as in Christ. Okay. Let me just pray. Gracious Father, thank you so much that we can turn and listen to some words that you spoke 2,000 years ago, and then we can see how they are relevant to our lives today. So, Lord, open our minds and hearts, we pray. Give us this spiritual seeing, we ask, in Jesus, in your precious name. Amen. Amen. So, I want to... Uh, share eight things that I believe this, uh, what Jesus is saying here about our, the nature of our relationship with him. Okay? Eight things. So you can get a rough, uh, but they're not all, I'm not going to say an equal amount, so don't panic if 
after four, you think I've already preached a whole sermon. They're not necessarily all the same length. Okay, so the first thing to say is that what Jesus is saying here is that our relationship with him is a connected relationship. It's a connected relationship. In this story, uh, in, in, he, what he says here, he says there is one vine and there are many branches. He doesn't say we are a field of sunflowers. He doesn't say we are a vineyard. He says I am the vine and you are the branches. There is, you know, he, he, he is one and we are connected to him. He doesn't even in his, the phrase he uses is remain in me, isn't it? He doesn't say remain close by me. He doesn't say remain with me. He doesn't re say remain near me. He says remain in me. And that is a word of connection. So a fundamental truth about our relationship with Jesus is that we are connected to him. This is a connected relationship. We're connected. And of course, that has an implication because we are not only, if you think of the picture of the vine and the branches, we are, because we are connected to him, we are actually, therefore, also connected to each other. Because he doesn't, you know, he doesn't say, I am the vine and you are one branch, Peter, and, 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 and John, I am another vine, and you are, John, are another branch. I am one vine, and all the branches are connected into the vine. So, as a children of God this morning, we are all connected into him, the one vine. And a connection is not only with him, therefore, but it is also with one another. You see, Jesus came to this earth to offer us connection with himself and connection with other people. That's the nature, the, the heart of the relationship that we have with him. It's a connected relationship. Secondly, it is a living relationship. Jesus doesn't say, I am the water tank and you are the copper pipes. He doesn't say, and that's a bit more of a modern analogy, I suppose, but in those terms, well, no, the, water, the idea of Romans had lots and lots of water tanks and they had clay pipes from them. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say, you know, I, I am the reservoir and you are the, the, the iron gullies that flow off it. He says, I am the vine, a living thing. And you are the branches, living things. Okay? We've just recently, you know, celebrated the joy of the resurrection. But of course, the reality is we're here today on the first day of the week because the first, we are here because our presence being here is a, a celebration, isn't it, of the resurrection? That's why the Christians met on the first day of the week. It wasn't a public holiday. It wasn't a holiday for them, but that's the day they chose. And every time we come in here, quite rightly, as this morning, is a celebration of the resurrection because we serve a risen Lord Jesus. And my connection with him, therefore, is not centered around my, what I know about him in my head. It is not centered around what I've researched and found out about him. My relationship with him is a living relationship. It originated when I gave my heart to him, when his heart reached, out, when his love reached out to me, and I returned that love to him from my heart, knowing his forgiveness. So I have a relationship with him that is a living relationship, centered around my my heart, my, our spirits, isn't it? it? It's a spiritual relationship. It's not a, it's not a head-knowing relationship. The relationship, think of other relationships that we have. You know, a, a relationship with uh, a plant at home, well, don't forget that, because the plant's living. Our relationship with a nice piece of furniture at home is very different from our relationship with our children or partner or whoever at home. Completely different. 
There is something absolutely superior about a relationship with something that is alive. Forget the plant analogy. With something that is alive. And this is what our relationship with God is about. It is a spiritual relationship. It is a relationship fundamentally from our hearts. And therefore, of course, the implication of this for ourselves is that as we are meeting each other this morning, Jesus is here that we might meet him this morning. That's what he wants. That's why Jesus has come here this morning, to meet you and me. And as good as it is to meet one another this morning, is that fundamentally why have we come this morning? What's our expectation this morning? What's our heart's desire this morning? Uh, how are we going to feel if we go home? When we go home, what, do we talk about all the people we've met or do we talk about Jesus who we've met? Because our relationship with him is a living one, just as it is with each other here this morning. Because he said, I'm a vine, I'm a living thing, and you are the living branches. It's connected, it's living. Thirdly, our relationship with him is a two-way relationship. Praise God for all that we receive from him. We know his forgiveness, his love in our hearts. He is, his joy, his peace, his mercy. He's done so much for us. But it's not just a one-way thing. It's not just a one-way relationship. Jesus wants from you and me out of, our, out of our relationship with him. What does he want? He wants, as we have this morning, the praise of our hearts. He wants to hear us praising him. He wants to hear us praying to him. What have we sung this morning? Take it to the Lord in prayer. He wants to hear that prayer from us. He delights to hear us talk with him. Why are the Gospels full of Jesus talking with people? And Jesus so often asked people questions, didn't he? Why did he ask them questions? Not just, he didn't, it wasn't to catch them out. He loved people talking to him. And that's one way you get people talking to you, is you ask them a question. And so he asked Peter questions. He asked Peter, the road men on the road to Emmaus questions. That's what he did. And Jesus wants to hear you and me talking to him. He wants to hear our praises. He wants to experience the love of our grateful hearts. And he wants also, as we've sung this morning, for us to bring in our cares and our burdens. He's told us to bring them. And if we bring in our cares and our burdens, and that's partly it's an expression, isn't it, of our relationship with him. And he loves it. He loves it when we bring in our cares and our burdens. Let's not hesitate to do so because our relationship with him is a two-way relationship. It's not just about him giving us things. It's about us bringing things to him. Expressing our connected relationship. Expressing our living relationship. Expressing the fact that this is a two-way relationship with him. Fourthly, this relationship with him, it is a dependent relationship. We are not equal in this relationship. He is the vine and we are the branches. And they are distinctive and different things, aren't they? The vine, who's got the roots? The vine has got the roots. Who gets the water out of the ground, therefore? It is the vine that gets the water out of the ground. Who is it who creates the structure and grows out the branches? It is the vine who does those things. Who is it who gets the nutrients that feed and enable growth? It is the vine that does that, not the branches. A vine can exist in its own right. A branch cut off from the vine cannot exist in its own right. God does not need you and me to exist. You and me need God to exist spiritually. 
We do not have spiritual life outside of our connection to God himself. That is where our life comes from. We used to sing a hymn, I need thee, oh I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. That's that this is a dependent relationship that we have with him. We need him. We need him to live spiritually. We need him. He is the vine. We are the branches. And maybe there's a tendency that sometimes we forget that in the relationship. There's a tendency perhaps that we think that well, perhaps we're a bit more the vine than we really are. You know, we can say to Jesus sometimes, can't we? Jesus, uh, uh, I've got a busy day. I'll be doing all these things, Jesus. Could you please bless them for me? And we think that we're the day's about us rather than about him. Jesus, uh, I'll do my best for you today. But it's not really about us doing our best for him, is it? Jesus, if I'm not too busy today, I'll I'll, I'll join in the meeting this evening. And it's not, we're focusing everything around ourselves. He is the vine. We are the branches. We are dependent on him. We are dependent on him. Yes, every hour I need thee. Jesus describes this dependency uh, a, a bit earlier on, just um, some verses in John 6, I'm going to read, that express this dependency in 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 another way, a quite disturbing way, really, that caused quite a lot of people to turn away from following him. John 6, 53, we read as follows. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up in the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of you. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your forefathers ate manna and died, but he who feeds on this bread will live forever. So Jesus spoke about the fact that he is the one who uh, is our food and drink, isn't it? His, his, his very life, his very essence is what we need to live. Spiritually, we are dependent on him. We are dependent on him. It's a dependent relationship. Fifthly, it's a continuing relationship. It's a continuing relationship. Relationships and friendships are come and go, don't they? I don't know about you. I don't know whether you're still in touch with anyone you were... Is anyone in touch with anyone they were at school with? I know Sarah is. is, Oh, wow, I'm impressed. Okay, I'm not. Oh, my goodness. And within three years, I don't think I was, you know, at school. Maybe that was just... It wasn't my thing at that time. But, okay, that's great. Friendships come and go, don't they? Uh, And I don't mean about being a friend on Facebook. Don't, Don't... fall for that one. It's not about, I like you on Facebook, is it? That's not what friendship's about. That's not a relationship. But relationships do come and go. Sometimes they're intense, sometimes they're strong, and and, and some disappear, and of course new ones come along. We can't just simply add and add as we go through life. We have to find some friendships and relationships come to an end as well. But this relationship that we're talking about and looking about this morning is a continuing relationship, isn't it? What's the fundamental word that Jesus uses in John 15 that we also saw there in John 6? It's, it, it's kicked off, first of all, by Jesus using it in verse 4 of 15. He says, remain in me. Remain in me. I don't really like, like to nitpick about translations, but I, I do wish it really used the... Uh, the, the older version, the, the word that's stuck in my head about this, and probably lots of you as well, isn't the word remain, it's the word abide. Dwell. Dwell. That's right. That's right. 
It's the word abide, or dwell, which, means, which means dwell. It means live. It's the, word, it's the same, abide is the same word uh, uh, in the original. as the word which we have for abode, which is another form of uh, word for home, isn't it? So it's the idea of dwelling, living. Live in me, dwell, abide, remain. This relationship is a continuing relationship. It continues. Now, okay, our relationship commences by us receiving God's grace and knowing his forgiveness in our lives. But Jesus is hammering his disciples here through these, these verses time and time again. You know, every, I think every verse, in some verses it says it twice, he talks about remain, 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 abide, abide, live, dwell, dwell, stay, stay, stay in me, he says to them. Because he knows everything that's going to come. He knows what they're going to face. He knows the challenges and difficulties they're going to have. And you need to remain in me, he says. Abide in me. And to do that, how do we do that? How can we remain in him? How can we make this a continuing relationship? I think four things. Firstly, we need to act quickly when problems arise in the relationship. Because they only ever arise on our side, not on God's side. Let's be clear about that. And of course, uh, if you're think, thinking about the analogy of the vine, then a problem that would arise with the vine is that some disease would occur on the branches. If you come to my home, uh, I've got an apple tree, some of you have seen it before, and uh, unfortunately I've been hit again. It's now smothered by this thing which Jackie diagnosed for me one time. It's called woolly aphid. And it's just, the whole thing's starting to appear uh, furry white as these aphids uh, attack my apple tree and enjoy themselves and lay their residues all over it, all over it. And so, you know, every day of the week ahead, I've got to try and be out there trying to deal with this problem and get these rid of these woolly aphids. And I've got to do it. Because if I want to have any prospect of getting any fruit off that apple tree this year, I've got to deal with it. And when we get spiritual disease in our lives, we've got to deal with it. We've got to deal with it quick. Don't hang around. Because otherwise it will weaken the plant further and further. So when we sin, we must confess our sin. And God will be faithful and just and he will forgive us our sin. So we, to make this relationship remain, we need, we need to deal with disease as a branch very quickly. Secondly, we need to really live this reality of depending on him. If God cut us off tomorrow, would we notice the difference in our lives? If God said, if God, when we woke up, God, God had decided, I'm going to have nothing to do with Trevor tomorrow, would I notice the difference? Have I, have I been, do I live in a relationship where I'm dependent on him day by day that I, I could tell the difference? And what about you? We need to live the reality of depending on him. We, thinking earlier this year about all those in, in Christ phrases, we, 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 we spent a little while in Philippians looking at some of those extraordinary promises that are ours that express ways in which we depend on him. Do you remember? There's those scriptures which says... His peace will guard our hearts in Christ Jesus. That's where we find peace in this relationship with him. My God will supply all your needs in Christ Jesus. If we live in him, God will meet and supply our needs. It is a relationship where we really can depend on him. And of course, we can do all things in Christ who strengthens us. Our relationship is to be connected and depending on him, trusting him, believing him, leaning on him each day, relying on him. We must do that day by day. And then Jesus also says here, verse 10, he says, if you obey my commandments, you will remain. You will remain, you will abide. If you obey my commandments, it must, we must live a life that's a life of obedience to him, doing what Jesus says, pleasing him. 
And verse 9 says, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain, abide, abide, dwell in my love. We must live a life that is expressing love. If we are to remain. So this the relationship we have with him is to be a continuing relationship. It's an abiding relationship. It's a living relationship. Living day by day in this place of being related to him, connected to him. Sixthly, this relationship is a growing relationship. Only dead things don't grow, doesn't it? If something's alive, it grows. That's the reality of it. If something is alive, it has to grow. It has to grow. It, that's the way it is. Uh, growth doesn't happen at a constant rate, of course, and, uh, and the nature of that growth will change over time. But it will still grow. That's true in any relationship, isn't it? Is our relationship with our children or our partners or whoever, is that the same as it was 20 years ago? Of course it isn't. Relationships change. They are, they are growing. And it's just the same in our relationship with Jesus. It's a growing relationship. It's a growing relationship. Wow. It's, it's a relationship, with, of course, with God himself. So there's always so much more for us to explore and discover and experience in our relationship with God than we have so far. We, we, we never, we've never got to the limit of it. He, of course, knows us, but from our perspective, the relationship is to grow. And of course, that's at the heart of our thought for this year, that we are growing into Christ. Growing. It's a growing relationship. I hope we can look back, you know, a year or two and think, wow, I've grown. I've grown in my relationship with the Lord Jesus in this last year. Seventhly, this relationship is a unique relationship. It's a unique relationship. Take a, take a vine, take an apple tree, take a, any, any plant. No two branches are the same. That's just the way things grow. They don't grow identically. It just doesn't happen. If you, you, can, you can try and force a, a, a plant and a tree to sort of give you a, a consistent shape, but if you look at, and I've done it with my apple tree in my garden, for those of you who've seen it, but, but each of the branches is incredibly different in themselves. There's a symmetry about it, but the branches, are, every one of them is unique, and you and I are unique. And my relationship with Jesus is a unique relationship. And so is yours. Your relationship with Jesus is unique. Don't look at Leandro and me and think, oh, I'd like to have, or no, I don't want to have a relationship with Jesus like they have. Or whatever, you know? Don't look at another person and think, that's how I want my relationship with Jesus to be. No, 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 no. Of course we can learn lots from other people, but we need to be looking at Jesus and appreciating that he wants us to have a unique relationship with him. He wants us, this, his, our relationship with him, to be unlike his relationship with anyone else, you know, because he's made you and me unique. And we're to express that in a unique relationship with him. Our relationship with him is unique. And eighthly, lastly, our relationship with him is to be a fruitful relationship. A fruitful relationship. You can't miss that with this whole passage, can you? And that's really, I'm going to focus on that next week in some detail. But at this point, I want to say that when you think about the vine and the branches, then what's the point of the branches? If the point of the vine is to be rooted and create stability and to grow out the branches, why does the, bra the vine grow out the branches there's only one reason to bear fruit and the purpose of our relationship with the Lord Jesus is just that isn't it? it's just that 
It's not decoration. No one grows a vine for decoration either. It's not a desperately attractive plant. I had a grow at white. I had a go at, uh, tried to grow, I grew one for quite a few years in, um, when we lived in Brant Street. I thought I had an ideal spot to grow it and I grew it and it shot out. It went 20 feet that way and 15 feet that way. Every year it was spectacularly long. How much fruit did we get from it? In probably about six or seven years we had it? Zero. Absolute zero. So what did I do? I dug it up, threw it away. What's the point of trying to grow of growing a vine? It doesn't bear fruit. The point of my relationship with Jesus is that I might bear fruit. That's what he wants from me. That's what he wants from you. So we'll explore that next week in more detail. And the challenge this morning, for me as I thought about this, whoa. Do these eight words describe my relationship? Do they describe your relationship with Jesus? Is your relationship with him a living relationship? (laughs) Is your relationship with him continuing one are you abiding in him actively abiding not existing abiding living in him is it a growing relationship how is our relationship with him let's just pray together Lord Jesus, we sung earlier this morning that there is no one like you. There is none like you. No one touched my heart like you. And Lord, that is my testimony this morning, that no one's touched my heart like you. And I thank you that you, in your grace and mercy, have connected me to you. And brought me into this living relationship with you. That we can walk and talk together each day. That we can live together. And Lord, we thank you for this wonderful picture you use to describe this relationship of the vine and us as the branches. And Lord Jesus, this morning we in our hearts, Lord, we're, we're listening to you. We're hearing what you've got to say to us. But Lord, we want to respond. We want to grow our relationship with you. We want to be more alive than ever with you. We want to abide with you more than ever as we go from this place. Lord, the past is the past. It's the future which is our concern. We want to... We want to Lord, we want to walk with you. We want to talk with you. We want to tell you. We want to bring you our burdens. We want to share with you our cares. Lord, thank you for reminding us this morning we're in this relationship with you, the living, the living Lord Jesus. And thank you, Lord, as we go from here this this morning. we, We go together. We go abiding, we go walking, we go living together into our homes and our places of work and study and all the challenges that we face. Lord, thank you that we're we're connected to you and you're not going to let us go. And so we will go with you into whatever this week might bring. Knowing that you are the vine You are the vine. You are the source. The source of everything. You are the one who who grows us because we're connected to you. Thank you for extraordinary mercy and love and grace towards each one of us. That we have entered into this connection with you. 
that you've adopted us into your family. We praise you together this morning and ask that by your grace we may just live, truly live, truly abide, truly remain in you as we go through this week. For your praise and glory we ask you.